along with it here ourselves, but the system's nearly getting in the way. Mm. And that's something I really want to put a focus on too. The, you spoke about amenities and stuff, the likes of schools and hotels and GA grounds and the whole lot. I'm from Ross Cray, mm. which doesn't really have many amenities. One of the biggest, probably the local hotel, which was taken away in the last year to house refugees. How went, so there, so there is a closed down hotel in the middle of town in Ross Cray which was dormant, it's not been used. And the one in operation was outside, just, yeah. uh, you know, a couple of kilometres outside town. That's now gone. And now Ross Grey, I think, has 70% of all refugees in Tipperary are in Ross Grey, mm. one town, which isn't well served. I tried to get an, eye, an, an appointment for my eye last week. I was told to wait five days for, for an eye appointment. How is that a good idea? Being honest, it's not. Yeah. Right? So I, I can't come in and tell you anything. Yes. Yeah. Um, but, and, and the reason I think it's particularly not is because the key to the key to migration is social cohesion, right? This is a good country. Mm. And Irish people are full of two things, compassion uh, and common sense. So we are a decent people and people want to help out and people know the importance of migration to run our hospitals. Yep. And work. Oh, so let's take all that as red. Immigration is a good thing. But they also demand common sense from us. And if they see the only hotel in a town being shut down, they're saying, hang on, that doesn't pass the common sense test. Yeah. Now, we've got to be honest, let's be really honest. There were about 3,000 people a year coming to Ireland, 3,500 people a year seeking international protection. We saw a major war in Ukraine and for lots of other reasons as well. We saw the number of people right throughout Europe increase and now the, the number of migrants coming to our country, probably around 25,000 a year, right? So we've had to build a new system in real time. And I've got to be really honest with you. In an emergency, that meant the state had to take whatever it could to provide the assistance, right? So we had a, a duty to try and find accommodation in, in an emergency. That can't be allowed to continue, though. I mean, because you will damage social cohesion if you're going into rural towns and villages and saying that hotel or that community facility that used to be an amenity now isn't available to the community. So what we have to do when we've started this is on public land provide facilities for people seeking international protection. We have to get the system to work much more quickly. So if you have a right to be here, we need to tell you you have a right to be here, let you work, let you get on with your life. And being very honest, and this is the hard side of it, if you don't have a right to be here, we need to tell you that much quicker too mm. and make sure you leave. So there were figures out during the week that yeah. show that's, that is going in the right direction in terms of process and times. But we've had to build a system in real time. And like, like I say, immigration is a good thing, so don't get me wrong on this, mm. it is a good thing. But not everyone who raises a concern can be just dismissed. I don't like that idea. Dismissed. There, was a, there was a lot of that when people in Ross Gray said you're closing the only hotel in town. Like there was a lot of people on Twitter and all quick to call them far right and racist. And yeah, all. I, like I know what the far right is, right? I think the far right is dangerous. Mm. Uh, I think the far right is bad. Uh, and, and I know the far right and I ha have no time for it, no truck for it whatsoever. But there's also just decent people who are nothing like far right. Mm. And they actually, they're actually, and they want, they want to help. Uh, but they also want answers. They want to know, hang on a second, are you putting in the extra school places? What about the health services? Yeah. And that's the bit we're trying to get better. And since I've become Taoiseach and I've only been doing this job for seven months, I've been trying to make that change to show people, hang on a second, there are rules. Uh, rules will be applied. If you don't have a right to be here, the rules will be applied too. Communities will be supported. And we're going to have to move away from this emergency model of whatever is available we must take to actually saying, hang on a second, we need to have a more organised system. It doesn't seem like the communities are really consulted much. Like it doesn't seem like if there was something being built in care, it feels like we would have no veto, that it would be government policy and local people have to so go no, in. So look, I think no one can have a veto, right? Like no one gets a veto as to who lives next door to them, right? Or no one gets a veto, like no one, you know, no one asks my next door neighbour, was it okay for me to live beside them, right? Yeah, but if you're but, talking but, about putting in but, a couple of hundred people. But I do think, yeah, I do think there has to be a better engagement with a community. And, and we need to show communities what process do we actually go through? when we're considering opening a new facility. Yeah. Like, what's the checklist? Mm. What do you do around the school places? What are you doing around the investment? And we've set up funds. We have a new uh, community recognition fund where we are providing lots of money, millions, uh, to communities say, because you've made a contribution here, we recognise you need more support for your community. Here's funding to deliver certain services in the community. But this is an area that, like, I've taken a personal interest in this. I, I think we have to get this right. I think social cohesion depends on it. Immigration is a good thing. But the compassion, common sense mm. balance, I think, is what needs is, to be delivered. Is there a number that's too many? When, 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 as a government, do you turn around and go, do you know what? We have this. This, this services is, are over. We're, we're, we're swamped. Yeah. So, so, so we're so we're not right. Mm. We're not swamped, and we're not full or any of that sort of stuff. No, you, there's you, a fair you, amount of tents around Dublin. You haven't used that, like, yeah, but 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 let me like, get back to that. But let me just what we have to do. Like we have job vacancies in this country. If you walk in to butchers, bakers, candlestick makers, hotels, restaurants, cafes, the public service, the hospitals, they'll tell you how hard it is to actually recruit. This is a country that used to have a population a hell of a lot bigger than it currently has. 
the challenge. Well, you're going back the, to the famine now. The challenge. Well, the, <laughs> the, the, well, the population's grown, right? The, yeah. the, but the, cha the challenge here isn't that. The challenge is the need to be much more organised. The challenge is to have a much fairer system where actually you're saying, hang on a second, that is a small rural community. It's very different the impact it t in that small rural community that only has a population of a couple of hundred yeah. than it is on a town that has a population of tens of thousands. Now, in fairness, and obviously I'm going, I'm going to be fair to the government because I'm part of it, <laughs> in fairness to the government, we were doing this in an emergency. And what I'm trying to say to our listeners is this, we need to move away from that emergency system now to a much more organized thing. I don't think there's such thing as, as, as a magic number, right? But I do think we have to prepare, not just in this country, right across Europe, to, ha to, to prepare for migration levels that are more similar to be where they were today than where they were five years ago. And the job vacancies, like you said, there is job vacancies and there is, it is, it is hard to get staff. But the people coming in can't work. For six months. Yeah. That's the, and, and, I, and to be honest, I think that's important too because we, we don't want to be out of line with other European countries too here. We need, like, we got to look at this in the context of all of Europe. Um, this is a small country, there's only 5.3 million of us, 7, 7 million of us on the island. Migration's happening right across Europe. We have to work at a European level, I think, around what the rules are. We have to make sure we're fair and decent to people who come here, but we also have to make sure, you know... Like we're I, looking after I, ourselves. Yeah, well, like, for example, I think if you have, if you have an income and you're, and you're in the asylum system, I think you should be asked to pay a contribution. I think that's just fair. Mm. Um, I think you should have to pay something um, towards the services that you're provided. That's a change I want to see brought in in the next couple of months. Because if you, this is all a balance, and Irish people will come with you, and they'll back you if they think, if they think it passes the common sense test. And sorry, what was the six months you said? So the rules at the moment are you can't work until you've been in Ireland for six months. And do you have Sorry, to you can't work. Yeah, you can't work unless you have status. So if you're in the international protection system while your application is being processed for the first six months, you don't work. So if somebody gets processed and their process, and if their application is denied, yes, they turn around and walk out the door. So people have a right to appeal. Many people leave. Many people leave if they're told they don't have a right. And actually, there's evidence to show that some people decide to appeal it. Uh, and ultimately, if you if you decide not to leave, uh, you can be served with a deportation order. And if you choose not to leave, then you can be made to leave. Yeah, I see there was 98 enforced deportations in the last 12 months. Because yeah. most people actually just leave. Mm. Uh, like if you think about it. Most 648 voluntary returns. Yeah, which is massively up on the previous year. I think it went by about 140%. So like the number of people. But have we any idea how many people are coming in through Belfast? Uh, I don't have the direct numbers as to how many people no, are coming know, which yeah, way. But, but, I mean, but, 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 but it feels like we've no control. Well, I tell you, most people aren't coming through to the airport. I mean, that's the truth. Um, so we've we've made sure that there are airport checks and the likes as well. But actually, the numbers are out coming through the airports are much smaller. So a lot of people are coming here to what we call secondary movement. And that absolutely involves the link between Ireland and the UK. And it probably goes in both directions as well, in terms of people here going over to the UK too. We're, we're nearly out of time. We're getting the curly finger there from next door. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look, uh, a couple of quick things. A lot of farmers listening. Mm. Um, Rural problems. That's what we're after. Yeah, well, <laughs> a, a lot of farmers say to us,